first thing we will discuss on part two of our basics instructional is the guard position. I'm now using my closed guard. Using the closed guard means my ankles are crossed behind my opponent's body. This can keep him from moving away from me if he wishes to do so, to escape my guard. Basically, the guard position means that I am controlling my opponent with my legs. A general rule of thumb is whenever you are on your back or fighting from your back, you want your opponent in front of your legs or controlled by your legs. So if I'm on my back and I'm here, it's bad for me. Okay? Anytime I'm here okay, or here, it's good for me. Okay, so the first thing, just to go over very quickly, is the closed guard. Once again, I have my ankles crossed. The closed guard is good for keeping him inside my legs so he can't get out. Okay? But my attacks are very limited from this position. I really need to open my legs to do many of Jiu-Jitsu's attacks. Okay? This guard can also be good if perhaps he's, he's really trying to punch me. Okay? Here, like say he's trying to punch me, I can hold around his head and keep him very close. Okay, you'll notice that my hand is protecting my head from potential headbutts here. Okay, also this side of my body okay, is closed off. I can now wrap his arm, close my legs, keep my knees very close. All right, you'll notice that if, if, if I do it on the other side of my body here, okay, you'll notice how my elbow and my knee are very close together, which makes it very hard for him to hit my ribs or punch me here. Okay, right here. Real tight. Okay, I can always do this or slip my knee in between. All right, so the closed guard is good for things like this. Also, with the gi, all right, which is a nice training tool for you guys right now, we do have some attacks, which we will discuss first. The first submission we will discuss from the closed guard is a choke, collar choke. Uh, we're using the gi for this technique. I'm going to have my partner turn me so that you can get a better angle of what I'm doing here. Here in this situation, uh, if you bought the first uh, DVD, you'll notice that when we passed the guard, he had good posture. I couldn't choke him. In this situation, maybe he puts his hands on the floor here and gives his neck, opens his neck, lowers the neck so that I can reach it. Okay? First thing I'm going to do is I have to cut the slack on his gi. You see this slack here, this distance. I don't want that here. Okay? I want to cut the slack on his gi. All right? It's very important. First hand is going to go inside, four fingers inside behind his neck. You'll notice that I'm not satisfied with just grabbing the collar weakly here, like this here. This is weak. I want to grab deep. You see my fingers going all the way up here. It's very important. And I got very tight. Okay, so I have a good firm grip on the gi behind his ear. Okay, for you beginners, you can line up your thumb. You'll know that you're deep enough when you're behind his ear. You'll see how my left hand is always working to cut off this slack. Okay, I don't just go in like this because there's like a little too much slack. Here. So, I go underneath. All right. This hand can now be used to lift his chin. Maybe he's going to bring his chin down to not let this other hand underneath. Okay. I can lift his chin. If he tries to put his chin under here to, to, to make it so that I can't get under his neck, I can dig under okay, to lift his chin. It's very important. I want to be on his neck. This choke affects the arteries in his neck. Okay. I'm going to close off the blood to his brain. So here, underneath. My second hand will go under the first, here, okay? Doing the same thing, very deep, all right? There's two ways to perform this choke. I like to combine both. One is simply turning your hand. Basically, as I turn my hand, the back part of my hand will press into his artery, okay? Like this. You see how straight here, that turns into his artery, presses into it, okay? Back of my hand. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to pull down using my lat muscles. All right? So basically, I get here, here, underneath, deep, and pull down as I turn my hands. You'll notice how this works. Okay? Also, if you want to think of it this way too, it's a very effective way. If he doesn't want to come down to you, maybe he's very strong here. Okay? So I'm trying to pull down, it doesn't come down. Okay? I can also use the first hand I put in to frame his neck, to keep his neck stable. Okay? The second hand that goes underneath, I pull like I'm pulling a bow and arrow. Okay? Framing and pulling. Here, here, the second hand pulls like a bow and arrow move. Okay? 
Same thing with my wrist too. Turn your wrist. Okay, so on the other side, maybe I went on this side first. Second hand goes underneath. Okay, so now my right hand is the pulling hand. Okay, so my left hand frames, my right hand pulls. And we've completed the collar choke. Our next option is to collar choke over with the second hand. Basically, the reason I would do this is because I put the first hand in and he, he really blocks this off here. Okay, I can't get underneath here. I, I'm having a very hard time. All right? So let's say this is my first hand, so that you can see the detail on this side. So I put this hand in, he blocks off. All right? There are two basic ways to perform this movement. One would be to stick my thumb just keep your head down, please, inside the gi here. Okay? So I'm sticking my thumb inside the gi. Two, to grab the fabric. I prefer to grab the fabric. It's very simple. So right here, I'm just going to grab the fabric. All right? So I'll be on this side of his head here. All right? I simply grab the fabric of his gi very tightly. Now, it's the same thing as the other choke. My uh, right hand is acting as a framing hand. My left hand pulls. Okay? It's going to tap. All right? Very simple. If my thumb was inside, it would just be like this here. You see? Thumbs inside the gi. This hand was underneath, just like the other choke, same thing. This is my pulling hand. Now, in this, in this case here, the top hand is always your framing hand. Okay, so the, the, the hand that is the thumb inside is framing. You'll see it's very little pressure I need just to pull. Okay, so in this case, and that will complete the choke. The next technique we'll talk about that may be done from the closed guard position is the kimura. Okay, the shoulder lock on the arm from the guard. All right. In this situation, my opponent has his hands on the floor, okay? In the guard passing section, we talked about this. We don't really want the hands on the floor. It's not a good idea. He wants good posture here, okay? But now, my opponent oh, puts his hands on the floor, okay? It's a good drill. Like, as soon as you see someone do this, grab it, just like this, okay? Thumb up. Grab his wrist immediately, okay? Right here. The next move I'm going to make is to sit up. Now, you can open your legs for this, but you don't need to, okay? This can be done from a closed guard position. I can just keep my legs closed as they are, my ankles crossed, hold uh, his, his wrist, and sit up, okay? Just move me this way a little bit. There you go. <clears throat> After I sit up, I'm going to bring my arm underneath, okay? So I'm over his tricep. Let's see where his elbow is, right here, okay? Just at the bend of his elbow, like this. Over, okay, to my own wrist. So see how the arm is bent at a 90 degree angle. Some people have great flexibility here, so if you let the arm bend, he can bend his arm up behind his back real far before he's going to tap. That's not good. I want to keep his arm bent at a 90 degree angle here, okay? You see this L I'm making? It's nice, okay? So I'm grabbing his wrist. I'm grabbing my own wrist. And now, look, it's very important here that I keep his arm close to my body, and I try not to use the strength of my arm to achieve the shoulder lock. I try to twist with my body, okay? until he taps. Okay, so this is the simple Kimura, the shoulder lock from the closed guard. Okay, so his hand is down, and here, I sit up, grab my own wrist, notice how I sat back, helps to bring him close to me and complete the lock. I have the arm close, not far away, I'm not doing this to strengthen my arms. I'm keeping him close, and watch how I turn to make him tap. I use my whole body to make him tap. It's the Kimura lock. I may also do this uh, shoulder lock by opening my guard. Sometimes my opponent will give me a little bit of resistance. And uh, a, a nice way to get this with the legs uh, is what we'll discuss right now. Basically, if I, can, if I have my legs open or I want to open my legs, okay, it's important that whatever side I have the lock on, that that leg is high over his back. Okay? Why? Because I don't want to just leave it open and have him just jump and flip out. Yeah, like roll right out of my guard. You've got to keep him down. Okay, but what helps here is if he's resisting, let's say he's grabbing my pants or something. He's grabbing my pants, to, see I can't get it up. Okay, it's nice because I can hook. Notice my right foot. I hook under his ankle. Okay. What I can do now is to uh, take away all his leverage. I can straighten his leg out. He's almost ready to tap now. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just turn a little. He's going to tap. Okay, so this leg. So basically the two things I've changed 
is I put this leg high over his back and this leg is straight in his left. Once again, I'm here. I went for the normal kimura lock, okay, and, and, and for some reason I'm stuck. This leg stays high over, okay. If you were to see, he's bending forward. Sometimes if he's, if he's leaning back, I can't get my leg in here. So I kind of use my knees to bring him towards me. Now, I'll definitely get it. Plenty of room. I don't need to see. I can feel it. Feel my right uh, foot underneath his ankle. Stretch him out. Now it's impossible for him to escape. It's very hard. And I just finished the lock. From the Kimura position, sometimes my opponent will be very, very strong. So I want to work on a nice sequence move that we can do from the closed guard. Another closed guard move. Submission move. My arm is already up over his neck, like this. You can see the side here. All right, but maybe for some reason I can't get it. He's holding my leg. Whatever. Okay, I can't get the move. We're going to go for the guillotine now. All right. Basically, it's so simple. I'm already in the position. I simply take my arm and wrap it around his neck. Now here, because we have the geese on, it's going to be hard for me to grab my own hands or do the move that we did in part one. Okay, we, do, we did the guillotine standing where, where my hand was on his shoulder and I used this move here. It's going to be really hard for me to do because everything is tight and he knows what I'm going for. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come up and around and grab his gi collar here. I'm just going to stand up and show you what I'm doing. When I'm here, I put my four fingers inside his gi collar. Okay? Like this. This is what it looks like. Okay? So my four fingers go inside, just like the choke we did previously. Right here. Okay, but my arm is up and around his neck. I have to make sure I use my thumb. Okay, this part of my thumb is a guide going underneath his chin. I can feel this. Okay, so I know I've got it. Okay? Underneath. So you see how my thumb kind of raises up underneath his neck. This is what it looks like from this side. Okay, so it's going like this. And I'm grabbing his gi. Okay, once I grab his gi, I'm going to extend my body away, okay, squeezing my bicep. So, I'm going for the Kimura lock here, but for whatever reason, I can't achieve it, okay? I'm going to get it. I go underneath and grab his collar. All right, try to get slack. It's difficult sometimes because you don't always have all the slack, but I got it here, okay? Nice. Get the slack here. Now it's really simple. I simply raise my body away from him, okay? What you have to do is, once your hand is here, you're keeping the head tucked under your armpit here, okay? And move my body away. Right? If you need a little extra slack, that can be done right here. Right here, I can just do it on this side. It's really simple. I'm here, you can even do it from this position. I've seen guys do it right from here. Closed guard, they try to get this choke, okay, whatever. They don't feel like it. They just sit up and stuff the head, okay? Right here, boom. Okay, they keep their body up until they're ready and they expand themselves away. So we're here, okay? One, two, I have the guillotine choke right here, nice and tight. What I'm doing here is I'm really making sure my arm goes this way. I tighten it up. Okay, but I can feel the difference when I do that as opposed to keeping it loose. I really tighten it up and get as much of this collar as I can. Okay, right here, okay? Then I'm ready to go for the choke. It's the guillotine choke with the gi. Although there are a variety of techniques that I can perform to submit my opponent with my guard closed, like I said before, it's very limited. Okay, I have other choking techniques you know, here, but uh, those are you know, the three big ones that I'd like you to concentrate on as a beginner right now. Uh, <clears throat> the next three techniques we'll discuss, in my opinion, are the pillars of guard submission. All right? The reason for this is because they can all be performed with the use of your legs, your hips, your entire body. Okay? It's really nice. Like, whereas these are you know, pretty much arm, arm techniques, although I can lower him with my legs. It requires a lot of arms, and, and I may or may not have the gi. All three of these techniques will work with or without the gi. Okay? And they involve the legs, the use of the legs, which is really fantastic. It's usually legs and hips versus my opponent's arms, which is really nice. And that's what jiu-jitsu is really all about. Okay, it's about a smaller guy being able to beat a bigger guy with leverage. All right, so even if the guy is absolutely huge, chances are his arms aren't going to be that much bigger than my legs. All right? So here I'm using the leverage from my legs to attack his arms or his neck. All right? So 
The first thing we're going to do is the arm bar. Okay, the arm lock from the guard. I need to open my guard. So the first positioning of the feet we're going to use is hip control. Okay, hip control. It's very important. So right here, I'm going to open my legs. All right. So basically, I can open my legs and put my feet on his hip. Having your feet on his hip is really beneficial, even from a, a self-defense standpoint. Uh, I'm trying to stay away from on this, ba uh, from on this basics DVD sportive things and, and uh, or too much aligned self-defense. I'm trying to do it so that, look, you can defend yourself with these techniques on the street if you want to use them, uh, but I'm staying away from all the sportive angles and tricks. I don't want you guys just learning how to get two points for the takedown and then hide. Okay, I want you guys to be well-rounded players. Uh, right now you don't have a game of your own. You still have to learn these basic techniques first. Then you can pick and choose which ones you like best and go in that direction depending on your body type and uh, your attributes, your specific uh, physical attributes. Right now, <clears throat> my feet are on his hips, okay? Now, uh, perhaps he, he, you know, he, he wants to grab my neck to choke me for self-defense, okay? He's leaving his arm. Like, that's it. Yeah, just think of this guy. Yeah, you know, maybe it's a self-defense move, okay? He's trying, to, he's trying to get me. Okay, this is the way I like to show this to my students when they first join because, you know, you, like I said, you want to first beat the average guy on the street, okay, before you can be... Uh, you know, a jiu-jitsu guy. Most jiu-jitsu guys aren't going to do this, okay? If it's a jiu-jitsu guy, it's going to be different. He'll be holding here, and I need to set it up. It's a little bit different. Right now, let's just concentrate maybe on a self-defense perspective. He's extending his arm. So this will also teach you as a beginner, you don't want to extend your arm here in the guard. First thing I'm going to do is once he makes his mistake, my foot, whatever arm he's extended, that foot stays in his hip. That knee comes close to his shoulder, okay? So this side is important right here. Right. Now I'm going to have Bob turn me so that you're facing the camera, right? <coughs> right here. All right. The next thing, see how this is close? All right, because now at this point, if he decides to pull his arm back, it's tough. All right? I'm going to make it even tougher in a minute. But let's say he tries to bring the elbow down. Uh, yeah, like you know, he'll try to lower it. It's very tough because my 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 uh, elbows here. Now here's something for more advanced players that you'll notice. A lot of people when they go to do the arm bar. Um, the, the guy will always drop the elbow to the floor. You have this problem, right, when you try to get the arm bar, just as a note for advanced players. Wait, just, just try to remember to do this. This is basic stuff, and you might have forgotten. When he's here, if he drops the elbow to the floor, lift your hips, because now it's nowhere near it. Now I can just easily pull his arm this way, okay? Don't forget to lift your hips. So here, though, for self-defense, most people aren't going to drop their elbow here. They're going to really try to be persistent about choking you. The next thing I gotta do is take this leg and bring it high over my opponent's back. Here. See this movement. This will do two things. It'll keep him from being able to pull his arm back out. See now he's stuck. Okay? Two, it's gonna pivot my body in the direction of his arm to really get his arm. I wanna make it, the next thing I'm gonna do is bring my leg over his face. It's very hard. It requires a lot of flexibility to bring my leg over his face here. I don't wanna rely on that. Put my leg over his back and pivot. You see, I'm pivoting. Now, if I want to put my leg over his face, it's very easy, okay, because I'm pivoting. So we're here, feet and hips. Feet and hips is also very nice because, for example, if, if he's really someone trying to put weight on me and he's very heavy, closed guard may not be the best thing. Yeah, ah, and now he can crush me. Here, this is nice for self-defense. I love this because if he tries to crush me, look, you know, I keep him away. All right, so this is nice. I like the feet on the hips. All right, so right here, feet on the hips. He's trying to choke me. This right here, leg high over the back. Now, I'm gonna pivot. Watch how as I kick my leg this way, it helps me to pivot. I'm gonna push off a little bit with this foot, okay? Pivoting. Clamp down over his back with your foot, see? Now his arm is lined up. At this point, you may wanna control and secure the arm, okay? The so thumb has to stay up. Thumb up, okay? This arm will hook it here. I may or may not have the geese, you just hook, okay? Once again, for advanced people, if he brings his elbow to the floor, check it out. Let's say we're doing this and you're advanced. Lift your hips, okay, that's important. So keep it here and you can use your hips to control. This leg is still tight against his body. The next thing, if I want, his head is here too much, I can push his face, bring my leg over. Now notice how his elbow, is inside here, okay, because this is what I'm going to lock, elbow lock, shoulder, or elbow lock, okay, so basic arm bar. My knees pinch closely together. You'll notice uh, if your mount, you know, might pull the arm bar, pulls into your groin. 
All right, if you vice his arm, see how his arm moves up and I squeeze my legs? I'm vicing it, okay, so it's not creating any pressure on my groin. My feet point down, the thumb is up, I pull his wrist down, I lift my hips, my legs go down, my knees are squeezing tightly together to finish the arm bar. Now we're doing this from a throat grab, we're going to do the omoplata. You're going to learn in this situation why I call them the three pillars of guard submission. We're going to do our first sequencing from the guard. Basically, uh, you know, we're going to set him up. We're going to go for the arm bar. We're going to use a typical defense or reaction to get my next move. The nice thing about the triangle, the arm bar, and the omoplata is they all connect with each other very nicely. They sequence together. And that's really what makes the difference between an advanced player of jiu-jitsu and a beginner is that the advanced guy not only knows all the basics, but he knows how to combine them all to trick you. Okay, he's working a few moves ahead like chess. Right? So here, he's going to try to choke me. I go for my armbar. Remember the armbar. Okay, the armbar move. All right? I'm going to go here, and he's going to be aware. He's going to feel the pressure and pull his arm out. Okay, once he pulled his arm out, this arm is left behind. At this point, once again, use your training wheels. Okay, use the gi. You're going to grab his belt. Okay, Bob, just turn a little bit this way so they can see this detail here. No, uh, to me. Yeah, this way. Okay, good. I'm grabbing the belt here. If you don't have the belt, you can grab the pants. Okay, whatever. There's a lot of different moves here that are going to work off this move. Okay, so the belt, the pants, whatever. So you grab right here. You've got to make sure this arm is, is on this side of my body. Okay, if it's not, if it's here, you may want to take the opportunity to lift your hips and pull it over. So you're already starting to notice that there's a few moves that are similar to one another within each move, like the triangle. Remember when we wanted the arm over, we lifted the hips to pull the arm over. With the arm bar, we wanted the arm in the center of my arm, we lifted the hips. So it's the same thing here, but the key here, I want the arm on the same side of the body uh, uh, that I'm grabbing the belt on. All right, so once I have this, okay, come back this way, Bob, uh, the other way, yeah. Once I have this, I'm now going to Bring my legs to the side, same side of the head. So if you need easy keywords to remember, same side of the head here, okay? And make the triangle. So now, again, I'm making a triangle. So it's similar, okay? So triangle, arm, arm, apply. They all have similar ingredients that make them very easy to learn together. All right, so right here, I'm holding the, the, the belt. I close the triangle. Put my foot down. It's giving me extra weight, extra leverage, counterweight here. So if he does try to sit up a little bit, I have weight. It's harder for him to get up. I have extra weight out there. Okay, another thing is, if he tries to dig his way toward me, okay, my foot's going to be in front of his face. I can block him here. You see my, the job my left leg is doing. As you get more advanced, there's going to be lots of great techniques here. Okay, but right now, just do this. The next thing I do is, I'm going to help myself up. I'm going to try to line myself up so I'm sitting side by side with him. All right, I'm going to get up. If I need to do this to get up, putting my hand on the floor here, that's fine. However you want to get up, okay? You get up. The next thing I'm going to do here is put my arm high over his back. Okay, right here. What I like to do when I have the gi is I like to open the collar. Okay? I like to open the collar here. Hold the collar. Okay? If you don't have the collar, you can just hook underneath his, his shoulder. You can grab his wrist. Whatever. Okay? But you're holding over his back so he just doesn't flip himself out. Here. Notice how his hand, his arm uh, is controlled. It's trapped, okay, between my, my upper thigh and my, my stomach. Trapping it so he can't get it out. All right, this is here, high over the back. Next, he may still try to sit up. You notice how his shoulder's pinned? I need his shoulder pinned to complete the movement. He may sit up. If he sits up, nice little trick, he's kicking your leg straight down. It's going to push him to the floor. Still holding over his back. Bring your leg to the side. This leg goes out. It's going to help me sit up. This leg is going to push me forward. Here's a little detail very few people show. You see how his arm is bent? Remember when we did the Kimura lock? Uh, when his arm was close to his body, not at a 90 degree angle, it was very easy for him to escape. I want to put his arm at a 90 degree angle. How would I do that? <clears throat> well, there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can simply grabbing over his back. We can just push myself away. Now, do you notice this space here? Okay, it's nice. More pressure is going to end up on his shoulder now because of that. Another way we can do it is if we have the gi, it's kind of a nice technique. We can open the gi. Okay, right here. Grab it. 
like this. And I dig, I pull up on the gi and dig my elbow into his back. Now I can push his body away with my elbow. This actually caused a bit of pain, okay? He's tapping from down his back and his shoulder. I can tap him here, okay? Like that with two hands, it's nice. But I have very good control over him, okay? Push away, but by pushing away, I can make this space, okay? He's locked, I feel his arm now. He's locked nicely. My leg is here, put this leg back, and I sit up toward his head, not forward, right toward his head. Finish the almond plot lock. Now let's look at how we can combine these three movements. All right, um, we're just combining submissions at this point. Uh, like I said, I consider them the pillars of guard submission because no three other moves from the guard combine so well as triangle, armbar, and omoplata. Right now we're going to do them in this order. We're going to do the uh, armbar to the omoplata, just like we did before. Then he's going to try to escape by coming around. Okay, we're not going to go so heavily into this escape right now because it's not the escape section of the DVD. Uh, but he's going to do a pretty standard sit through escape to come at me again. Okay? As he comes at me, I'm going to go for the triangle choke. After the triangle choke, he's going to do a pretty simple defense, and we're going to go back to the arm lock with a few other minor details here. Okay, so I'm going to go for the arm bar right here. Okay, boom. We already did this combo. He pulls out. Oh, plata. He sits up at me. I open my legs and right in the triangle choke. One arm in, one arm out. Right in the triangle choke. Notice how his arms on the floor. No problem, my foot goes in his hip. You see how, watch how as my foot goes in his hip, my knee comes up, boom. Hips up, cross, triangle. Now he might look up to try to avoid the pressure on his neck. I bring my leg over his face, okay, back to the arm bar. It's the same, I lift my hips, thumb is up. Okay, you'll notice one thing though. I cross my ankles here, why? Because it, this foot, is gonna help keep this foot on his head. If I do it here, it might slip off, okay? I cross my ankles, it's not gonna slip off at all. Squeeze my knees together tightly, lift my hips, I have the arm bar again, okay? Arm bar, omoplata, triangle, arm bar, okay? All working together. Okay, so here, you know, if things don't go right, I can always come, come back to the omoplata, okay? Again, so they all go together. They sequence very nicely. So again, yeah, let's do the other side. So this drill you're going to practice over and over if you train in nine bag, over and over and over. Here, boom, boom, he pulls out. We go for the own plot, he comes up. Boom, triangle, okay? Arm bar, okay? Sequencing. This is going to make the difference between a beginner student and an advanced student of jiu-jitsu. We now know that the guard position can be an excellent place from which to submit your opponent. We can also reverse the fight, all right? Sweep someone over, okay? You do perform a reversal. Sweeps, reversals, takedowns, very similar type of thing. Basically, I started on the bottom, I turn him over, now I'm on the top. Uh, I want to, before we go into any sweeps at all, I want to talk about just a really simple move for you guys uh, for self-defense. Right, it can be done right, just like this. Sometimes you may not want to be on your back, depending on your fighting surface. Uh, perhaps he pushed me down, uh, he punched me in the face, knocked me down, whatever. I end up like this. Or I was just sitting like this, okay, in this position, and he comes to attack me, whatever it is. I'm on my back, I don't want to be there. All right? So it's a very simple thing I want to review really quickly before we continue. Now let's say he's standing, please uh, stand. Let's say he's standing up, okay? I'm going to be exactly how I am. You notice I always sit like this. Okay, this is very important. Uh, it's a good position for uh, this kind of defense. What I'm going to do here is my, you'll notice how my right arm is on my right knee. Okay, it's attached. In case he goes to kick me on the outside, okay, like a wide kick here, I have a block here. If you've ever caught your shin on somebody's elbow, that, that really hurts, okay? It's a nice block. Okay, so I have this side protected. Okay, I can always duck my head in. 
whatever. The side's pretty nice and protected, okay? And I also have, of course, this side protected. I can always swing my arm around to block my face. So regardless, my elbow kind of stays near my knee somewhere, all right? And this arm is a buffer hand, okay? It protects me a little bit, all right? The next thing I'm going to do is this, this hand is on the floor. For this next move, my right leg and my left hand are going to be planted firmly on the floor. I can lift my body up with them. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to lift my body up. I'm going to use the bottom leg to kind of kick his knee or his leg just to lock it out and push him away. This is like a finishing move, okay? I'm just pushing him away, okay? If I do it hard, it kind of hurts, okay? So just be careful with your partner if you're doing it. But come up, boom, okay? I kick him away. As I kick him away, the leg's going to slide underneath me. One, notice how my hand's out here so I don't get hit. Through. One. Through. Look how wide I am. Why? Because I want space. When I drag this leg back, I'll be standing. Okay? I'll be standing up and ready to fight him. Let's look at it again. <clears throat> I fell down. One, whatever. I got attacked. Come here. Never come up like into his, his foot, you know, with your face. Here. I'm in this position. I'm lifting my body up. One. My legs wide. Not here. Okay, here. Hand out. Eye on your opponent. Up to your feet. I'm ready to fight. Now we'll discuss some turnovers and sweeps from the guard position. So like I said, I'm on my back and I want to turn my opponent over. I would like you guys to start after you become comfortable with the moves. Just, you know, the basic steps. One, two, three, four, real mechanically. I want you to start putting them together. So here's the beginning of that. All right, we're going to start to put our guard submissions together with the sweeps. So what we're going to do is, we're going to try to get sweeps off of my opponent's submission defenses. Right, it's really easy. Let's look uh, at the first one. We'll, use, we'll, we'll, we'll start off where we left off, okay, in our last sequence of submissions. I think we did the arm bar off the triangle. Okay, so we'll take it from the triangle. We'll figure out what to do. What, what do we do if, if somebody defends a triangle? How to sweep this person. So here... I was in a triangle choke position, if you remember, all right? And he was looking out, okay? Now, remember, I said you had to be pivoted to do the armbar? Let's say I'm not pivoted. Let's say I'm here, and I, maybe I didn't do it right. Maybe he, would, he, he moved his body, okay, whatever. So I'm stuck, but I can't get it. His, see how his neck is open here? I can't get it, all right? So here's what we're gonna do. Take your hands and put them behind you on the floor, okay? You're going to lift your hips. Now, if I go this way, he has this hand out here to base. It's going to be hard. I can't push into him that way. I have to push into him this way. Now, one of the problems with the sweep that a lot of people have is that this leg's in the way when you go to sweep, so we'll discuss it in a second. But first, he looks up. I push my hands on the floor, and I lift my hips, and I drive into him. Okay? You see? Up. I'm going to try to do it nice and slow for you guys. Either you're going to end up in this position, okay? And you can still go for arm locks here. What I want you to do is I want you to come right up. You're going to roll your body up this way. Okay? This is a very good position. Okay, I'm just sitting on the back of his tricep. My leg's under his head. Okay, he's in a lot of trouble here. I can easily just with my body keep his, his uh, tricep closed, pull his head up, okay, and make him tap. I have to let him breathe, alright? Okay. All right. Or, you know, just here. You can punch if you like punch his elbow so you don't break your hand. But here, very bad. Or I can continue again, hook my leg, and now I have the triangle to jump really tight. All right, now we're going to go from the arm bar and use his arm bar defense in order to sweep him. In this case, we did it before. We went to the Oma Plata when he resisted. So we were here, okay, and, and, and before he pulled his arm out. Now, he's going to keep it here, okay, because I have my legs tight. Maybe he knows that I want to go to the old plug. 
he's going to like hold his hands or something. He's going to close this space. Okay, so when I'm here, what I have to do is if I have to try to get my hand in deep. All right, if I just uh, bring your leg toward me, spin me this way so my head's facing. Yeah, okay. So if we're here, I have to keep my hand in deep. Okay, I'd like to hold my own collar if I can. So when he's here, oh, hold your hands again, please. Yeah, okay, I get this. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring my arm under his leg. Okay, can you see my right hand? Yeah, under his leg, just like this. All right, I'm going to hold his leg. What I'm going to do now is really easy. A lot of people try to push him back. That's not the way to go. What I'm going to do really is I'm going to just rock to my left. Okay, so I bring his head straight down. So I'm keeping everything closed and tight. I'm lifting and I'm just going just to my left. You see? Dump him right over. He has no base there in that direction. Okay, so we'll come back. Okay, so I went for the arm bar. He's covering. So I got to hook this in, okay? Otherwise he'll get out when I do it. Hook underneath his leg. Rock to my left. Okay, let's look at it again. This is a very simple sweep. I love it for beginners because it's so easy. Here, here, underneath his leg, okay? Rock to my left and sit up. Now I have him pinned with my legs, okay? So I'm going to take this opportunity just to talk about this, this armbar situation, okay? Um, you're going to see, especially on a lot of advanced video series, instructional series, a variety of ways to loosen the arms. You know, because what do I want? Just like I did the arm bar, I want to have his elbow here. Okay? We did this, I think, in the first part. Okay, and we want to have this arm lock. Okay, Juju Katami arm lock. Okay, Shabs, Brasso, okay, whatever you want to call it. Just straight arm, arm lock. Uh, he, you know, he's going to grab his arms and fold his arms. All right, so, so, so a lot of people do this. There's two things that he could be doing here. One, he could be using this hand to pull this hand towards him. If he does that, look, you can scoop it up with your feet. Maybe you see how I do that? No, don't cross your ankles necessarily the whole time. But when you scoop it up with your feet, okay, keep this foot pinned over his head. I can simply cup this arm and pull it toward me. He has no pulling power anymore. Okay? Here, it's easy. I could just scoop this out and get it. Two, he's strong or something, or he's holding his own gi collar or my pants. You know, whatever. Okay, this is, this, is, this is another situation. Instead of pulling, I can hook under his arm here. All right? If you want to use your hand here, that's nice too. Okay, my hand's here. And I'm going to lay completely on the left side. A lot of people try to do this by, they try to pull back first. Don't pull back. Lay completely on your left side. As you lay on your left side, just kick down with your face. Like rub his face a little bit. Okay, pushes his body that way and his shoulder this way. It's going to make a lot of pressure on his arm. I'm basically going to lie down making pressure on the shoulder. Okay? So I'm here and I'm going to drop straight to my left. This way. It really gets the arm off. Okay? So here. This way. Okay? I'm here. Be careful with your opponent's shoulder. And straighten out. Let's take another look at the sweep. Okay? So let's put this move together. Uh, I'll turn this way a little more so you can see my hand please. So we're here. <clears throat> We go here, he, he, he covers everything. So I secure my own gi underneath his leg, drop him to the side. Okay, really simple. All right, if I'm, let's look at that again, a little cleaner. Under his leg, drop him to the side. That was nice. Right here, he's grabbing both his own arm, okay, and everything. So I pull him toward me first, releasing the, uh, the ability of, of this arm to pull this arm in. Pull it toward me, see how it's gone? No more leverage. I lay completely on my side, roll out, and I've got him in the straight arm lock here. Okay? Squeezing these together, pulling the arm down. This is covered in, in, uh, in the first section. Okay? The first DVD. Once again, we're going to use one of the submissions that we discussed previously from the guard in order to turn my opponent over. Okay, we're actually going to use his defense to my submission attempt. But let's go back to the kimura. Remember the shoulder lock from the guard? If not, go back, study the details of this position. We came up and we were here. Okay, now, my opponent doesn't just grab, he grabs me. Or his leg. Look, look, look how deep he is. Look at that. I can't get this. No way. And even if I, I, and he's sitting back on his butt, so I can't get my foot in here. Nothing. So now my legs are open. Now it's a dangerous position for me. What I'm going to do with my hand, look at my hand. I'm going to come through, and my palm is like facing the floor and me. Okay? I'm going to grab his, his hand, with, with, his wrist with my hand here. Okay? 
So underneath, I'm going to grab his wrist with my hand. This hand is going to do two things. Because what he's going to do is this, to avoid this lock. He's going to drive me down with his shoulder. So if you think that you're just going to sit up, you're fooling yourself in reality. So very few people teach this, and this is wrong. You're not just going to, boom, get him over like nothing. So I'm going to be pinned. Ugh. This is the reality of the situation. What I'm going to do now is bring my arm out like this. And I'm going to drag myself back. You see, now I can get up. I'm pinned. Drag myself back. All right. Now I have his arm. Okay, he's trapping it for me anyway. I'm going to get up. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to shift my hips out a little this way. Okay, so let's turn Bob this side. Okay, so I'm here. You know what's going on on this side. What I'm going to do, watch my hips. They're straight on, like facing up toward the ceiling. Watch how I move my butt out. I get angle on him. This angle is very important. Why? Because he has most of his weight over here. And if I want to turn him this way, okay, but I won't be able to do that if he has too much weight on this side. So I want to put my body underneath his weight. Oh, yeah. Now, forget it. Okay, I post my left hand out and turn him over. Okay, let's look at it from the other side now, the original side. Now you know what's going on. So we went for Kimura. We were here. Boom, we go for the lock. Ah, he's, he's blocking it. He's smart, okay? Blue belt is not fooling around today. So I'm here, and now say he slams my back to the floor. Oh, forget it. Okay, we've all seen this in the gym. You're tired. You gotta use technique now. Drag yourself away. Escape your hips. Okay, now this is easy here. Up, hips up and over. Okay, to my left. Sticky more sweep, the belly sweep. Okay, now we're going to work on some reversals, some sweeps, while my opponent is standing in my guard. Before, we, we, we talked about how to get away from him. Now we're going to talk about what to do when he's standing up, and we want to get a hold of him. Uh, one important thing to remember if he's standing up <clears throat> is this. Okay? When he's standing up, he may try to kick me. So what's nice to do here is just grab his ankle. Just check it out. He can't kick me with this, this, this foot. If he tries to kick me with that one, <laughs> he's going down. Okay, so... Here, uh, he's not going to be able to kick me at all if I grab his ankle. All right, because all I'm doing really here, it's very simple. I'm pulling his ankle and I'm kicking my leg out. I'm just pushing his hip. See, because he took this foot off the floor, he, you know, he's done. So just keep that in mind, okay, for self-defense. All right, the same rules apply. Like if he tries to punch me or whatever, I can still use this. And here, boom, right in the face. Okay, or the groin, you know, whatever, whatever. Okay, the knee, these are very, very sensitive areas. Boom, boom. In the chest, in the face, this is all going to hurt. Okay, so we, you know, it kind of goes without saying. All right, but the ankle is very valuable for self-defense. Just from my own personal experience, uh, trying to translate that to you, it's just such a simple technique, and he really he can't get away very easily. He can't move. You'll probably end up sweeping him. Okay, if he stays very close to you, you can grab both of the ankles. Okay, so what you do here is you just pull his ankles and kick with your feet. He's going to go down. As soon as this happens, you want to get up immediately. Okay, you want to. You know, come up right away, all right? That's simple. <clears throat> if he's standing right over you, okay, if his head is, it comes above your head, all right, this is a very simple movement here. If his head comes above my head, I just lift him with my legs here, okay? Really simple, okay? So right here, I just, his head's above my head, I lift him. You want to practice in, in the school, you know, just, it's really good for your leg strength, just kind of lifting him here. Okay, keeping him here. It's good for your leg muscles and stuff. Okay, so right here. So I lift him. Once I have him lifted, I'm going to roll over my shoulder to get on top of him. Let me just show you this move here. If you could, excuse me, please. <clears throat> to roll like this, if I want, I want to roll over my shoulder, not my neck. Put your arm out, tilt your head, and roll over that shoulder. Okay, so that's really all I'm doing. Please come back. So he's here. Up. Okay, see how you can keep him down? You don't keep him like this in the fight, but it's good practice. Over your shoulder, okay? Over your shoulder, that's kind of poor. 
So right here, we're going over the shoulders. Head's above mine, and roll over my shoulder. Okay, now I'm in the mount position, like we discussed on the first DVD. We have a lot of attacks from this position. All right, so those are the two basic sweeps, you know, feet and hip sweeps while my opponent's dead. <clears throat> okay, really easy. Now, let's look at a few more complicated details here, okay? Still beginner moves. <clears throat> Once again, we hooked his ankle. It was nice. Right here, hook behind his leg. Why? He might try to step back and away. Step back and away. Start to lose him here. All right? So now in that case, I'll hook behind his leg. When he tries to step back and away, impossible. I can grab his hand. Use your training wheels, your gi. Okay? You can always grab the wrist if you don't have it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, push, and pull this leg toward me. Here? Really simple. I use the arm to pull myself right up on him. Look at my hips when I'm here. Hips first. Hips first. Don't bring your head first. Because the guy knows jujitsu, you'll put this leg in between you. Okay? Right here, hips first. See, he can't get his leg in there. Hips first. Let's look at it again. Let's do more of an angle like this so they can see the foot. Here. Here, you see this foot? Boom. Grabbing. Hips first, guys. Okay, here. Look, even though my leg seems folded, don't worry. When, when I'm in my own position, my foot's going to be there anyway. So here, look. Hips first. Okay. Hips first. To the mounted position. All right. Now, let's sequence this a little bit here. My opponent might be smart. Okay, he senses this. Like, oh, geez, I don't want, even if he doesn't train jiu-jitsu, he doesn't want this leg here. So maybe he pushes it with his hand. Okay. Ah. Giving me some trouble. All right, so this is going to change things. Since he wants to come around this way, I'm going to put my hips there. I'm going to escape my hips. See this? Watch my hips. Shift. Now he feels off balance. You can see. I'm going to put this foot right here. Just move your hand, please. Okay. You can put it back. Now, this foot drops down. I'm going to pull with this hand, kick out with this one, and sweep his leg with my left leg. See that foot behind there? Okay, so right here, he's going to go. Oh, the same thing, get up. But notice I won't go to mount, just go here, and get up on him. I was here, he tried to push down. I escaped my hips. If you're knee on the floor, he's not going to get by it now. Your foot on the floor. Okay, here, here, and you'll see this bottom angle kicking. I'm pulling, extending my right leg. It's in the on belly position. Now let's work on some escapes. The escapes we're discussing primarily in this section are pin escapes. Okay? Uh, the only exception will be the escape from the back, uh, but it's still a positional escape because we're escaping while he's on my back in the back mount position. We're going to use two fundamental exercises to escape from all of these positions. Okay? The first will be the escaping move or shrimping move. The second will be the bridge and roll, or upa move, okay? Uh, it's the same, same thing, it's just different terminology. The first move I want to discuss is the escaping move. Every jiu-jitsu school, uh, you know, anywhere, you're going to see them do this move. They have it in judo as well. I'm going to lie flat on my back, okay, right here, just comfortably. <clears throat> and I'm going to shift, I'm doing a sideways sit-up, okay? Just to show the move here, this is the way most people do it. You extend the leg, this leg is up, okay? From the outside leg, I'm going to shift my body away and push out, okay, like that, like I'm touching my toes, and I'll flatten myself out. You see how I shrimp back as I do this, okay? If I do it on the other side, this is what it looks like, right here, see how I'm on the balls of my feet, and you'll see that you'll start shrimping down the, the room. 
Here's a few adjustments that I've noticed through my training I'd like to share with you. One, you'll notice that if you just do the movement like this, you get a certain amount of escape, okay? What I like to do here is put my leg out farther. I get even more distance now on my escape. Okay, so that's one little detail I picked up. Moving your foot out farther. All right, another thing is I do it with both feet. And before I do the movement, I pop my hips up, I bridge up. Okay? So I bridge up and escape. Then bridge up and escape. I like to make this a habit. Okay, and you're gonna see in this section why that's going to be important because this move is usually used to escape from a pin. All right, if he's very tight on you, you're gonna need to make a little space before you do it. So most people when they do this in class, you know, you'll see them just shrink down the room. Not that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. When I do this movement, you'll always see me pop my hips up. Okay, it's a nice habit to get into. Something I put in the basics book and a few people ask me, they, they've never seen it before. Another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do like the getting to the knees move, okay? And this is gonna be like good for the bridge and roll. Getting to your knees is very simple. I bring my hips up, okay? Right here, and I come through. Do not put your belly on the floor, don't go like this. Very bad. Here, up, and I roll through. This leg comes under the initial leg, okay? And my legs come out wide. Up, through. Okay, the wide leg. Don't touch your belly on the floor. Now we can combine both movements. Right here, boom, through, okay? Really simple. So you can go down the floor like this too. Here, you can shrimp or you can bridge. Here, okay. Okay, so bridging, okay, getting to your knees, shrimping. All right, very simple. First thing I want to talk about now is how to use these two movements versus the, the mount position, the pin. Okay, so Bob, if you come in. Bob's going to mount me, okay? He's going to be on my chest. I'm going to do the simple bridge and roll move, okay? I'm going to trap his arm here. Don't trap his arm with the opposite arm. Don't do this. Okay? Don't do this. You give him chokes and arm locks, all right? He could easily choke me here, all right? Or arm lock me. I take care of it with the same hand, just like this. Nice. On the side, now, now I've determined the side I want to roll to. Why? Because if I just do the bridge and roll move, like to my knees, he, he can post his arm out. Okay, he'll just post your arm out when I go to bridge. Just here. Okay, see it's here. Or his leg. So I want to trap both sides. Holding here. Just pull it down toward you. Okay. I like to I avoid doing this. Because if he's strong, he's going to pull his arm up underneath. Here, I can't use my arm now. I don't like that. I like this. He has less control. Here, my foot's trapping his foot. All right. I'm going to bridge up, and I'm going to roll through, just like I did during the drill. All right. But let's look at the angle. This is the most important part. Let's get our heads lined up with the camera here, so that they can see the angle. I'm not rolling over my side. I'm rolling here over my shoulder. So I'm here, rolling up, look over my shoulder escape the mounted position. We'll be here. I'll try to do it. Maybe he will block. Okay? I've made plenty of space. Remember how I bumped my hips up? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to press my elbow in between his knee and my hip. I'm going to make a wedge. I'm going to use that pushing down movement. His foot's out, my right foot. I'm going to escape. See the hole I made here? I bring my foot in. I can do it on the other side to get to my guard position. Okay. You can do this move without the bridge. I'm, I'm, using, I'm combining them, which is quite nice, but without the bridge, it's simple. I'll share a little trick with you guys. If you want, and they're on top of you, you kind of got to worry about collar chokes, so I shrug my shoulders. You don't want to give your arms, but here, just sit up for one second, please, Bob. You can grab the belt. Okay, grabbing the belt's nice because it, make, it ensures that he can't get my arm. I grab the belt and I stick my elbows in at my sides. And so if I just want to do the escaping move alone. So he can be down, I'll just shrug my shoulders. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bridge up. I'm going to make a move like I'm taking my pants off. OK? 
okay? If anyone here lifts weights, you'll notice that it's, it's harder to lift it this way than it is to lift it this way. All right, so I'm going to press down like I'm taking my pants off, do that kind of move. At the same time, I'm going to use my escaping move. So my arms are safe from attack. I'm here. I'm going to go to the side, I'm going to escape and push him down. See how my arms are locked? Now that my arms are locked, he's not going to be able to get back. Put this here, and I'm in my guard. Okay, so these are a couple different ways I can do that, just using the escaping movement or bridging to your knees. All right, so one, two, escapes from now. These are two basic escapes. Uh, a lot of times people will teach this escape. The escaping was very important. They call it the elbow escape. That's fine. You can do it from here, protecting your neck with your hand and just wedging, wedging this arm in here, escaping. It's very effective. You can also push the knee in here if he's far enough down, wedging and escaping. It's all the same basic concept. Okay, so bridging and rolling, wedging to escape, two extremely important things. All right, these moves also apply when he's at my side. Okay. So I like to try to make this easy. I don't want you guys to think of uh, this move like an entirely separate thing. Like, here's my mount escape. Here's my side control escape. Make it all one big escape. So you're using these two moves no matter where he is. It's nice because when the guy gets on you, you don't have to think before you react. You just react. Go. Okay. You don't have to think about this too much. You think too much, he's going to secure his position. You'll get confused. It's difficult as a beginner. So here is in, in, in side control, maybe he's holding me here. Okay, look, remember when I bumped before? I said I bumped for the side control. Here's, here's the reason why. I have my hand on his hip, this is good, okay? What do I do? He's tight here. I wanna get this hand in here and I can't. So I'm gonna bridge, okay? So even if he stays down, on the way down, I slip my hand in here, you see? So I just did the little bump thing, okay, really quick. So it's nice, here, slip my hand in. So now, just sit up for one second, I have both of my hands on his hips. It's locked out. I'm saving my arm from a potential attack. When he's on top of me, I really don't want to give my arm. Okay, we discussed this in the first section. Okay, I can give the arm lock, shoulder lock. So I want to try to get it in here. I want to be here. Bridging. Okay, drop down, put my hands on his hips. At this point, look, my leg's out nice and far. I can use my escaping move. All right and I can replace my bottom leg. As I replace my bottom leg, I can extend the distance here, get it back into the guard position here, where I can begin one of our attacks. Or, once I get my hands on the hips, I can escape away to my knee. Okay, reverse the position, hold the leg, I reverse it. So you'll notice here, that what Bob does if he's stuck, he's holding my hip so I don't just come around. I'm tight, he's gonna try to get in here underneath. He's gonna make maybe a little shovel grip with his hand so his fingers don't get stuck. He can shovel in here. Okay, so I'm tight, he'll bridge. On the way down, pop it in. You see how he, he escapes nice and far, that was great, okay? Belly hit the floor a little bit, so let's see it again with the arm on the floor, okay? So here we go, up, through, yeah, fantastic. He's on his knees, he's ready to attack. Okay, he's in an equal position at this point. That's great. Okay, so now we learned the escaping move, okay, getting to the knees to escape from both side control and the mounted position. Now my opponent is going to have me in a headlock position. In judo, this is called case Uh In Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you're not going to use this position very often. Uh, there are some attacks from here, but usually use what's called a, uh, a modified case katami. A modified case katami, so that uh, you know you can come underneath my armpit as opposed to my head. So headlocks are very uncommon in jiu-jitsu. I'll show you why. Um, he's going to do a headlock here, okay? If someone who knows how to do this holds doing it properly, this can be very devastating. This can be very hard to get out of. Okay, his knee is going to be a little closer here. Yeah, this is tight. He's going to pull up my arm. One of the key ingredients here is that he pulls up on my arm. Okay, that's it's hard to get out of. All right, very, very hard. In jiu-jitsu, we often, we, it's not that we don't use this position, but we often go underneath the armpit. 
Okay, this is really tight, really hard to get on. It offers more attacking options. But for self-defense purposes, since this is a basics DVD, and this is uh, geared toward beginners, we want to learn how to do self-defense moves. And it's more common, I think, for a street attacker, somebody who doesn't know too much jiu-jitsu, to get you in a headlock. Okay, it's very popular, like wrestling type of thing. Yeah, so here, okay? So we want to use our escapes to get out. We can do bridging and rolling, and we can do escaping. I, I have this arm free, and that's a really great benefit here. There's a bunch of different things I can do. We, we'll discuss, especially in the master text, a lot of very, very interesting escapes from this position. But let's just try to, uh, once again, use our simple moves to get out of here. All right, and we're going to use uh, the basic bridging up and rolling or getting to the knees to get out. Uh, what I like to do here is I like to push his face away. You can use the gi to push his face away too. All right, really simple. You can walk away from him. All right, if he if if he gives you this the option here, you can bridge into him a little bit and. and Pull your elbow out. If you can get your elbow out of here, this is great. This is really easy. Just come, use your escaping move. Okay, I escape my hips away, push them away, and get up to your knees. Got to be right behind him. Okay, this is great. I got his back now. I can choke him. Whatever. All right. So this is simple. So I mean, a great, a great key to this position here, if you can remember this, is that if he's holding your arm tightly, I mean, you're in trouble. But if he's not holding your arm tight, you can pull it out. If you can pull this arm out, just escape your hips a little bit here and come up to your knees. Now it's nothing. I mean, he, you know, he has nothing at all. All right. So that's just a very, very simple way out of there. <clears throat> My favorite way here is to first, I want to bridge and roll him over me. First thing I have to do is I have to get him going in one direction to roll him in the other. The roll is going to be the same as the mount escape roll. But what I want to do is get him here. My goal here is to get his hand to touch the floor. Remember that I said that that was the key to holding the position? If I can do that, I can easily come up to my knees. Okay, That's nice. If he was under my armpit, I wouldn't be able to do that. Let's say go under my armpit. I would do it with this hand, go under my armpit. No, no, let go. And go, yeah, if he's here, I can't do that. I can't, I, uh. Okay, so that's why you hold like that. But if he's around my neck for a headlock escape, oh God. All I do is watch. See my hips? I bridge at him. Look, at my legs aren't here. My legs are lined up with his leg. As he does that, come up to your knees, okay? But here, we're going to do something even cooler here. We're going to bridge. We're not going to give him the opportunity to put his hand back down. We're going to keep walking back, driving at him, okay? So his hand has to be stuck here. He cannot remove his hand from here. Because if I stop, he can pull his hand back. Okay, I don't want to stop once I get momentum. So let's go back here. So I want to get my momentum and continue to move. So here, and I keep walking. I'm going slow motion now so I can talk. I keep walking. So he needs to have his hand here. He keeps it here. I don't bring my hips back down, and I bridge and roll him over. It is very important that you do not bring your hips back down. I am here. I'm walking back and bridging. Okay? So I'm here, walking back. I don't want that hand to come forward. If I go like this, the hand comes back. So a lot of you try to do this way, boom, down, his hand comes back, and then you try to roll, and you can't, because he's holding your arm. So here, boom, and over, to escape the Casey Katami position. I'm going to go into him, and over, okay, to escape the Casey Katami position, the headlock position. Back mount escape. All right, it's a very dangerous position. So Bob, if you just uh, get my back, <clears throat> right here. Bob has my back. He's trying to get at me. All right, right here. He's just controlling. This is not threatening. If someone's both uh, arms are underneath. This is good for sport for points, but he he is not going to tap me yet. All right. What I got to worry about is when he goes to choke. All right. So he goes to choke. Now I have to worry. All right. What I'm going to do, an easy way to remember this, is to, you can either hook here, right here, and hold the fabric of his gi here. Okay, you have to pull down. Okay. What I'm going to do now is bridge up. Okay, I'm turn so you can see. Boom. Bridging up. Okay, really simple. Right here. 
bridging up. My head is like in his head. Okay, you'll see if I turn this angle. Okay, very little control and very little ability to choke. Okay, I'm gonna pull down on him. I have to pull. As I pull down with this hand, I gotta watch it because he can change position. I'm gonna block his leg and watch my hips. I have to shift my hips out. My leg. Now notice this helps. Remember the detail we were talking about before with the escaping move, having my leg out farther? This is where this is really nice. Improves this escape. So I'm sitting on his leg. Here. I block this leg with this hand. Why? Because otherwise he'll come up and mount me. It's like, <clears throat> okay, no good. Okay, so I want to be here. Okay, let's see, we'll change the angle anyway. Okay, so here, I gotta, I'm pulling down, I escape out, sitting here. Okay, let's change the angle. Yeah. So I'm sitting on his leg, blocking here. If I can't reach it, that's fine. Just keep it for a block, you'll feel it. Okay, I'm gonna escape and here. What I'm gonna do now is, let me just show these people here. I'm bringing this arm over his body, and this one controls his hips here. So I'm in what's called reverse case of Gatami position, a modified case of Gatami. This arm is on this side of his body, pushing back. So it's a lot of weight, okay? This leg's out for a base. I don't just fall over. And this one. So I'm here, okay? If he's still holding my gi, At this point, he really doesn't have much of a choke. It's very simple. If it really bothers me because he's pulling this way, I can go with it. Here, let's just turn. I can just go with it. Look. <laughs> Not gonna get me now. I know I can get in. <laughs> all right. So it's simple. But the basic ingredient here is bridging up. All right. Let's bridge up. I'll show this angle here. I don't think we did that. We're here. He's choking. Boom. Very important. Protect your neck. Don't do this, guys. Don't go for the legs. I'm just get choked. Don't go for the legs. Okay? That's bad. There's some things later when you get more advanced, you can try to make him cross his ankles here. If he crosses his ankles, you can get your ankle locks. Look, don't. Get up. You're getting choked. Okay? Address the choke. Number one mistake I see when people get here, the reason they get choked, because they don't address the choke. They just, and they get choked. So hold here. Hold here. Hold here, okay? Hold. Get this off. Bridge up. Okay? Escape. Sit on the leg. Okay? Block the mount. I'm, I'm putting a tremendous amount of pressure down with, uh, you feel it there, Bob? Mm -hmm. <laughs> with my right shoulder, okay? And his chest. And my uh, right lat. This leg's not clear. I get it out. A lot of pressure here. Okay? Pressing him down. Make pressure. Hold him, and I've escaped the back mounted position. So you can see how uh, I wanted to concentrate on the escape section for beginners on using two moves to escape a variety of holds, all right? So here we had the back, you know, take a look, this bridging, right? The bridging and the escaping move, you understand? Okay, so it's all this kind, of, this movement here, or getting to the knees, all right? So it's all the same thing. I wanna to try to give you guys two solid moves that'll get you out of a whole bunch of positions. This is important. Instead of going over, you know, 20 different escaping techniques, and if his hand is here, you turn this way. It's a lot to remember, okay? We're talking about white to blue belt is anywhere from, you know, eight months to two years, all right? I, I can practice this thing for, for, for 10 years and not have it exactly perfect, okay? So I want you guys to concentrate on learning just a couple techniques at 100% instead of 100 techniques at 20%, all right? You really have to try to get these two moves down. They're very important. And they're, they're, they're going to help you through so many different positions. If you don't learn these escaping movements properly, you will build a house with a weak foundation. Okay, these are foundation moves. These are the bricks of your jiu-jitsu. All right, so here, let's look at the back position escape one more time in full speed. We're here. 
address the choke. Address the choke here. Bridging back. Escaping your hips. Okay? Sitting on his leg, blocking the mount. Coming through, laying on him. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Okay? Really important. Okay? If this hand is here like this, you can very easily pull his hand, this bottom hand on your gi. It's really easy to pull it off. This is nothing here. Okay? Easy. You can even roll your body away from it. Just that rolling away from it's going to get it off. Holding here and escaping the back mount position. The very last topic of discussion for this DVD series, the basic series, will be ankle locks, leg locks. Okay? Uh, we're going to do a knee bar and we're going to do a straight ankle lock. The reason this is de-emphasized a little bit in jiu-jitsu in the beginning of your training uh, is twofold. Okay? One, injuries. The ankle uh, is a place that you can injure very easily without feeling it right away. Okay? We're going to do a lock here which is going to affect uh, the ligaments here in your foot and the Achilles tendon a little bit. And sometimes you don't always feel the pain before things are ready to pop and snap. It takes experience to be able to feel that. All right? um, the knee hurts a little more usually. but. Uh, if, you, if you injure your ankle or knee during training, it's going to be very hard for you to perform any kind of life activities. All right? Very few of us are professional jiu-jitsu people, especially if you're watching this DVD series. You're not. Uh, you, you have a day job. Okay? You have, you're doing something else that you need to go to every day. And if you break your leg, chances are you're not going to be able to get yourself there. All right? So you have to be very, very careful. All right, uh, so before you do these, I'm, I'm throwing out an extra note of caution. All right, as you get more advanced, there are plenty of leg locks in jiu-jitsu. It's one of the kind of arguments that goes on that I hear that jiu-jitsu doesn't do too many leg locks or whatever. There's tons of leg locks in jiu-jitsu. They're just not emphasized at a beginner level for A, the safety reason, and B, we want to develop really strong positional skills. A lot of people that I see train who have years of training in that have concentrated on leg locks extensively, uh, let's say if instead of passing the guard, they'll go for a leg lock. I notice that positionally they're very weak. Okay, so when they get someone who's aware of the leg locks, let's say at a purple belt level um, or a black belt level, their game goes out the window. So they might have been training for 10 years, but they can't get anything because they don't know how to pass the guy's guard. They don't know how to do certain fundamental techniques. Once again, the bricks. Okay, We're talking about building a solid foundation for later. This is very important in the basic series. All right, so we want to concentrate on not getting injured so we can train more. Okay, the frequency of training is very important to how fast we can get good. And we want to learn how to pass the guard. It's very important. You know, pass the guard, you know, hold the guy down. For me, I think the most important thing, the, the, the piece of advice, uh, since this is the last section I'll we'll talk about a little bit, uh, that I would give to any beginner, is to learn one or two submissions from every position, but learn the positions. Okay, position before submission. Try to get your position, hold the guy down. If you're in the mounted position on someone, he's not going to be able to tap you so easily. Okay, so learn how to get to that position, hold that position. Okay, learn how to, to keep your guard from getting past. All right, learn how to pass the guard when you're in it. That's jujitsu. Okay, uh, but you know we do want to be aware of the ankle locks uh, primarily for defensive purposes. You know we don't want to just be ankle locked by somebody. Okay, but uh, also just to begin learning them, develop a foundation of ankle locking techniques so that when we do do them as a black belt, uh, you, you, will, you will understand what's going on. Another thing, uh, in the beginning of your training, when you start jiu-jitsu, your primary focus is, of course, self-defense. Okay, you want to learn how to beat people who don't know jiu-jitsu before, obviously, you can beat people who do know jiu-jitsu. Very few people are going to be whipping out knee bars and ankle locks on you, okay? So, of course, it's a secondary uh, point of focus, all right? You know, most people on the street won't be doing ankle locks, all right? So this is why it's a little bit de-emphasized. We're going to concentrate on straight ankle, knee bar, all right, and an escape. The first thing we're going to do here, we'll learn it from the guard position. And once again, I have to reiterate, can't say it strongly enough, please concentrate on your guard passing techniques, part one. We have guard passing techniques in part one. And I'm going to say again and again and again, it's very important that at this level, you learn how to pass the guard. Okay? But here's an option. Here's something. I like to teach my students this more as uh, 
like when they go to tournaments, this is something that a lot of blue belts will do to you, okay? Or, or people will do to you if it's allowed, okay? Sport jiu-jitsu often doesn't allow leg locks, but if they are allowed, people go for these all the time, or, uh, you know, someone who knows a little jiu-jitsu, sometimes they throw this in. Um, what we're going to do here is, if he leaves his leg dangling, he has a lazy guard. Let's turn you this way so I can get on the side. <clears throat> Let's say he has a lazy guard. You know, you like, when you're doing the guard, you really want to have your foot in a hip, a control point, like the hip or the bicep or something. But sometimes I have a lazy guard. And this is why it's going to be very hard for you to get ankle locks on high level guys, because they won't just have, leave this hanging here. Let's say it's hanging here. I'm going to wrap my arm around it. You'll notice how that the uh, toes are curling, you know, just like behind my, my armpit, the outside of my armpit. Wrapping my arm behind it. Place my hand on his shin. My other hand on my wrist. Now, this is going to look familiar to you, right? Like the guillotine technique that we did. We also did the uh, Americana technique, okay, the key lock technique, we're doing this common C technique. Okay, I like to try to do that. I like to throw in a bunch of techniques that, that, that work together here. So this is the same, all right? I have to make sure that this part of my arm goes right by his Achilles tendon here, presses low, not into his calf, and his Achilles tendon low, okay? So hold. Now I can almost tap him, just by doing this with my wrist, I can almost tap him here, okay? <laughs> you see him jump, it, it hurts. But it's not enough leverage. What I'm going to do here, really simply, is I'm going to go forward. I mean, now look, if you really do this technique for real, you don't want to telegraph it. So usually what I'll do is I'll be here, and I'll come forward on the guy a lot, then get it. Okay, so I didn't telegraph it so much. But I'm trying to break this down for you so you can really see. What we're going to do here is I can step on his leg. Okay, I don't have to. But basically, I'm going to end up sitting down. Okay, I'm going to end up here. I want to concentrate for a minute on my foot positions. One... The basic way you can do this, see a lot of people do this, is they kick this leg out. It's very hard to escape once I do that. And use this foot to keep him from sitting up. Okay. I'll squeeze my knees together. All right. Now, if I put all that together, all right, let's move just, just move back a little. That's good. If I put all that together with the appropriate hand positioning, okay, can you see this? Okay, squeezing the knees. And then what I'll do is, on top of rotating my wrists, I'll lean back, I'll arch my back, pulling his ankle up and stabilizing his body. He's going to tap, squeeze my knee, he's going to tap for this ankle lock, okay? Now a very good way to lock the legs in, okay, here, is going to be triangling your legs. You don't have to do this, all right, but it stops him from being able to roll in either direction. What you can do here is you can take this leg and bring it over, okay? My right leg is over his left leg. I can triangle my legs and hook under. Now, he can't roll that way because my left, uh, left leg is stopping him from rolling, okay? And it's very hard for him to roll the other way, obviously, okay? Now his leg is stuck. This is better for when you get more advanced. You'll turn a little, you'll hook your opponent's heel, okay, like this, and you'll twist that way, okay? There's a lot of pressure. <clears throat> Foot and the knee at times. Uh, that's called a heel hook. Heel hooking or twisting ankle locks are very, very dangerous. I have had both of my feet broken like this. The deltoid ligaments on the top of the foot torn. All right? Uh, I was out for quite a long time. So please be careful. I really didn't feel it until it actually popped. And I was actually able to train for a little while after that until the next day I couldn't walk. So let's be careful when we do these kinds of locks. All right? Let me spin you all the way around here, Bob, so that we can see it from a back angle. So I'm here, I'm holding my hands. Okay, this grip is important. See the grip the other way. Okay, I'm like this. All right, so the heel is like this, but trap. Here, if I go back, covering here, making sure this is low, pressing out, squeezing my knees, arching back. Look at my head go this way. All right, very, very simple technique. <clears throat> you also see people grab the leg like this and pull up. You can do that too, okay? I like this because it pushes, stabilizes his whole leg, his shin, and he can't sit up toward me easily. Now let's look at how to escape from this lock, all right? Let's say Bob has me in it. Why don't you do it facing this direction? Okay, so Bob will put me in the lock here. Okay, he goes back or whatever, all right? <clears throat> and he's here. 
Um, heel kick is his leg out. Yeah, my leg out. Let me put this here. That's fine. All right. If he's that far away from me, I really didn't want to let this happen in the first place, but if he is that far away from me, what I try to do here first, okay, is sit up. I'm going to turn it this way so they can see. I think that's good. And grab a collar. You can grab crossways if it's hard if you just watch your arm. Sometimes they'll go for an arm lock. So grab whatever. Just, just grab a collar. Why? You're stopping him from extending his head back like I did. If he's here pushing your leg out, here's what you do. You rotate this leg inside. Okay, can you see this detail of my right leg inside? And over. Holding. Inside. Over. We talked about this getting up before when we talked about the sweeps. Check this out. It's not so hard as you think. Take your hips and jut them into his chest before you get up, okay? He can't get his legs in between when you do that. You'll end up in the mounted position. <clears throat> One thing I want to show on this side, though, it's been, at least you can see this side of my leg. It's very hard for him to extend my leg if he's holding it. If I not only pull him toward me, but curl my toes back toward my face and extend my arm. See how Bob extend that leg? Real hard, right? Okay, see? Look how I'm curling back, kicking it straight. It's hard, right? Okay. Now, if I do that, he's here. I hold, swirl in, hips forward, mounted position. I will have escaped the ankle lock. One important thing, if he's in your guard, come into my guard please, and your legs, you do find your legs dangling, He's going to telegraph it 90% of the time. He's going to hold it like this. When someone does that, pull him down. Don't let anybody go back like that. Like, well, you don't want to be using a guard like this. That's how you get caught there. You, know, you don't want to be caught like this. You know, attack. See, now he's not going to go back. If he goes back, he'll take me with him. <laughs> you know, he doesn't have enough distance. He's, I'm going to come up with him. You can do that. You can hook under the arm. Get the arm off. Okay, so just important is prevention over escaping. You've got to prevent it. Have an active guard. Pull him down. 90% of the time the reason I see people get ankle locks is because they have an inactive guard. This is really easy. If he does it from here and I'm alive, okay, you know, I can be here. We can use our own plata technique here. You know, we can start setting up different things, all right? So don't have an inactive guard. Have an active guard. You know, hang out like this. Okay, here. Now he's not going to get it. All right, so this is how to escape the ankle lock, straight ankle lock. Now let's look at the knee, uh, the knee bar. I'm going to show this from like the knee on belly position because it's very easy. Okay, it's a very simple technique to show from here. Let's say we, we talked about this on part one. Um, we were in the knee on belly position here. All right, really easy. This is the easy place to do it from, and it also it's very similar to the arm bar. I think we did the arm bar here when we came underneath. And we came around, okay? If you didn't buy the first DVD, you should because there are some fundamental movements here which are the same. Uh, it's really going to help you out. I do this on the entire instructional, the entire basics instructional. I show a lot of techniques that will constantly overlap, okay? All the bricks on my foundation are the same color, all right? Uh, it's very, very simple. So here what we're going to do <coughs> is maybe his knee is here. It's on this side, okay? So I'm going to hook it. All right. So maybe if I just want to hold the belly, I could be here or whatever, but maybe I grab this leg. All right. So it's the same thing as the arm bar. Scoop underneath, and I'm going to come around All right, for the arm bar. So what I want to do here is almost like sit. All right. So I'm going to end up here so that the knee is coming through. Just like, just like an arm bar. All right. okay, Bob? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> just like an arm bar. His knee has to be visible here. I can't be too high and I'll lose it. All right. His knee is visible. I can even hold my gi just like I do with an arm bar. All right. Once I have the back of his foot facing me, his heel out, his knee pointed exactly at my chest. You know, it's time I can go for the arm, uh, the knee bar now. I go down. Now here, a lot of people, you know, and this is fine. You can just hold here, squeeze your knees together, and keep. See, I have my knee. I'm using the muscles in my back. 
I keep extending, and now I'm going to I'm going to lift my hips. Okay, until he taps. All right, so that's basically the way the arm bar looks. But there's a few things that I can do here to make it work uh, more effectively. <clears throat> One, I take this foot, put it over. This foot, put it here. Now I X his leg. He can't roll in either direction. If I do this, he's going to do two things to escape. One, he can triangle his legs. There's a whole series of things. We have this in the master text, uh, an entire series from here of leg locks. All right? But we're trying to you know, build the foundation, concentrate. If you can't get the knee bar first, you're not going to get these. So, <clears throat> you know, there's that. Here, up triangle your legs. You see? He can't triangle his legs. Another thing he might do. You might try to just spin out, like roll to one side or the other, Bob, for me, just, see, ah, I lost it. Here, it's hard for him to spin if I have control here. It's tight, all right? So Xing the leg is nice. Be careful, because if a guy's very versed in leg locks, there are some counters that he can perform, but essentially that's good. What I want to concentrate on, no matter where you are, okay, let's forget about the leg positioning, you know, say we're just here, you know, doesn't matter. What I want to concentrate on is this, improving the leverage of uh, the lock on this leg. I can come underneath this way. Okay, so I was holding my knee and maybe he's very strong and I can't do it. I can come under and use my armpit, my whole back. So this is tucked. Okay, just turn this way. It's tucked. Now I straighten my back out to get this lock. You can do it from a number of angles. Care careful with this one, please, because it will uh, have an effect on the side of his, his knee, all right? It's kind of dangerous, all right? So you can do it either way, right here. If you want to, you can only get this leg, that's fine. That'll help squeeze your knees together. And we have the knee bar lock. The setup is very similar to the outside arm bar setup on the first DVD in this basics instructional series. practice these techniques with your partner, don't use 100% resistance. It's important to get the fine details of each technique down first before you can try to do them with resistance. Otherwise you'll develop bad habits and you won't understand the technique at 100%.